Hello everyone. My name is Jervisya Hamidzitanon. I'm from Faculty of Engineering, Chiang Mai University. As you all know, today I am going to talk to you about studying and designing a microgrid system to enhance the efficiency of electricity production from solar energy combined with a battery energy storage system using the PV system homework software. I'm going to start with the problem and importance of the project in the current challenge related to energy production, pollution, and energy shortage. The issue lead to economic instability. Therefore, it is essential to develop efficient and cost-effective renewable energy system to create sustainable energy source and protect the environment in the long term. The study objective to optimize and enhance solar energy and battery energy storage system electricity generation to analyze microgrid system using physics to estimate solar panel efficiency and homo to enhance economic viability and investment stability to analyze the microgrid system cost effectiveness to increase investment return and save expense to present the development and the study subjectives are to optimize and ancient solar energy and battery energy storage system electricity generation. To analyze microgrid system using PVCs to estimate solar panel efficiency and homophobia to enhance economic viability and investment stability. To analyze the microgrid system's cost effectiveness to increase investment returns and set expense. To present the development and efficiency improvements from microgrid system to industry professional in the energy sector. The study area involves the installation of solar power generation and battery energy storage system on the roof of the Hitachi Energy Industrial in Bangu, Swoprakan province. The tools used for analyzing include previous which simulate and calculate electricity generation, efficiency, and losses in solar panels. Additionally, Homopro adds in calculating and analyzing the economic viability and finding the most suitable system for the project. We start the analyzing by examining the solar power generation system using PVCs. Beginning with the layout configuration of the solar panels, we know that there are four different scenarios, each with verifying tilt angles, as wood angles, and the number of panels. The settings are specific in the table. The solar panels use a GE solar brand, monocrystal like hub with a size of 545 watts each, totaling 1,310 panels and a combined capacity of 714 kilowatts. The inverter suit are Hitachi brand with a capacity of 60 kilowatts each for the total of 10 inverters. Then we figure the setting for each scenario to obtain the optimal value for the system while ensuring the total number of panels. The overall program settings are adjusted to match the real world data accurately, ensuring accurate system analysis. Money load data is configured for the one year period. 
starting from 2023. After configuring all settings, the program generates graph to visualize the data. From the analysis, we find that the solar panel system can produce a maximum of around 900,000 kilowatt hour per year. The energy input into the system is 4.59 kilowatt hour per kilowatt p per day. And the system losses 0 0.5. 14 kilowatt hour for the system and 0 0.93 kilowatt hour from the solar panels, resulting is an energy output of 3.52 kilowatt hour per kilowatt peak per day. The performance ratio is approximately 76.57%, slightly below the tap code. 78% PR from solar panel system. Nevertheless, a PR of 76% is considered efficient. Next is the power loss diagram, which show that losses are divided into two parts. External losses, such as reflection and dirt on the panels, according for 4.96%. And internal losses within the system, according losses in the cells, resistance and materials, totaling 22.89%. The levels help determine the new energy production for the system. The analysis continues with the main copy system analysis using HomoPool. After configuring the data, the program generates a schematic diagram as shown in the follow image. Economic parameters are set to calculate the project's cost and payback period accurately. Parameters include the discovery of 7%, an inflation rate of 3%, and the project duration of 25 years. Setting up results refer to configuring various parameters we use in analysis, such as iridium value and temperatures. The data are imported from project-specific locations. The data for iridium value is sourced from NASA. Similarly, temperature data is also obtained from NASA. The next step involves setting of program's fundamentals. It begins when configure the rate of use, or time of use, or TU rate. It falls under the category of large-scale commercial electricity used for industrial purpose, with a voltage range of 12 to 24 kilowatt. Additionally, the frequency of power outage is set up at two occurrence per year under the worst case scenario. The time for system recovery after an outage is estimated at five hours with a margin of error of 10%. After analyzing the program, four possible scenarios are considered. These scenarios are evaluated based on net percent cost or NPC. Levelized cost of electricity or SUE, operating cost and initial capital expense as detailed in the table. Upon analyzing scenario one, it becomes evident that the scenario offers the most favorable return on investment to its lower NPC and COE. However, scenario one is also associated with the risk of an unstable P power system as a black energy storage system. Scenario 2 closely resembles Scenario 1 in terms of NPC and COE, but it retains a high initial capital cost due to the degree equipment. Scenario 3, on the other hand, doesn't require initial capital cost. Realized solely on good condition. However, the option of solar system results in a high operating cost. 
Unfound analysis. It is for that over 25 years, the net present value of this project is around $8 million. The majority of the expense are attributed to operating costs, particularly electricity purchased from the grid, according for 88.9% of total costs. Therefore, the more electricity generating from solar energy will lower the project's expenses. Finance and some cash flow rewards and initial costs of approximately $600,000, consisting of equipment such as batteries, inverters, and solar panels. The yearly expense primarily system from purchasing electricity from the grid and maintaining equipment. Notably, only 12 years, there are replacement costs for items like inverters. When the project reaches the end of its life, there will be revenue generated from the solid value of the battery and inverters. The overall tenant in the graph shows that the expenses decrease over time due to the inclusion of depreciation in cash flow calculations. Next, we compare scenario two current system with scenario three base system. To have a clear comparison, it is observed that the starting point of the graph differ because current system incur equipment costs at the beginning of the project, which the base system does not. Furthermore, the operating costs differ leading to a divergence in the graph. We need this copy back period of 8.28 years. In analysis of solar system energy production, it is determined that the solar system generated 1 million units of electricity per year, representing 18.5% of the total. The remaining 81.5% is purchased from the grid. Additionally, excess energy is stored in battery, resulting in a surplus of 47.9%. The system experienced minimal energy losses less than 1%. Unmet electric load and capacity shortage are almost negligible. Renewed penetration stand at 212%. Indicating efficient use of renewable energy source and minimal available environmental impact. When analyzed, a solar cell system with a capacity of 714 kilowatt, it was found that the solar panels can generate electrical energy from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., with the highest energy production occurring between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., when sunlight intensity is at its peak. However, during the period from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., the system is unable to produce electrical energy, leading to an average production of only 115 kilowatt. When calculating the capacity factor based on the system size, it is found to be 16.2%, indicating that the solar panel system operates at efficiency level within the standard branch of 15 to 25%. In analysis of energy purchase from the grid, it also found that there was a total purchase of around 5 million kilowatt hour with no energy sold back to the grid. The graph showed that during the 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. period, energy was purchased from the grid in lower quantities due to the contribution of a solar panel system, resulting in sufficient electrical energy for load consumption. Regarding the inverter analysis, it converts energy from the solar panels, changing it from direct current DC to alternating current AC to supply the factory's load. When we calculate the average energy supply, 
which is 114 kilowatts, and divide it by the system size to find a capacity factor of 11.4%, slightly below the standard efficiency range. An analysis of the energy storage system, specifically the batteries, reveal that energy is charged into the battery from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. However, charging of course sporadically and mainly when the system receives a high amount of electrical energy from the solar panels. Therefore, excess energy from the solar panels is stored in the batteries. Nevertheless, it's clear from the analysis on the battery storage system is not yet operating at its potential. This is because the majority of energy is delivered to the load in appropriate quantities, leaving very little excess energy. As a result, the state charge SOC remains low and the battery cannot function at peak FNC. To enhance efficiency of battery storage system, three methods can be employed. The use of smart control system to manage battery charging and discharging processes. Optimizing energy utilization based on current conditions and using pattern. Installing additional solar panels to capture more excess energy and increase the battery charging cap capacity during period of high sunlight and programming the battery system to operate during peak energy usage times. Charging during low electricity cost hour or on peak and discharging during high cost hour or on peak to reduce electricity expenses. Due to the problem of low excess energy production from the solar panel system, the battery system cannot operate efficiently. To address this, we increase the solar panel system capacity from 714 kilowatt to 1000 kilowatt, resulting in a higher state of charge or SOC in the batteries. Additionally, the microgrid system has a shorter payback period. In summary, the solar panel system helps reduce electricity production costs, even though it doesn't always supply electrical energy to the loads. However, when integrated with a battery storage system, it can significantly improve electricity production efficiency. So this concludes the presentation. Thank you for your attention.